Welcome everyone, my name is John Spear. Uh, I'm the Executive Director of the Australian Workplace uh, Innovation and Social Research Centre at the University of Adelaide and a board member of the Don Dunstan Foundation. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you all here uh, to the Convention Centre for this very important and very timely conference. So welcome everyone. Uh, I just ask you if you've got phones that are not currently switched off to please switch them off to silent or turn them off altogether. That would be much appreciated. I'd like to acknowledge that we meet on the land of the Kaurna people and uh, who are the tra traditional owners of this land and we recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We have a number of special guests with us today I'd like to acknowledge. Uh, the Honourable Katrine Hilliard, representing Minister Zoe Bettison. Uh, welcome, Katrine. Great to have you here with us today. Pleasure. The Honourable uh, Reverend, Reverend the Dr Lynn Arnold, uh, the Chair of Trustees of the Don Dunstan Foundation. Uh, Rachel Sanderson, MP, Member for Adelaide. Mr David Butt, uh, the CEO and Commissioner of the National Mental Health Commission. Anne Gale, SA Commissioner for Equal Employment. Welcome, Anne. John Braley, the SA Public Advocate, and Glenda Stevens, the Chief Executive Officer of Homelessness Australia. <coughs> Yesterday, uh, we had a forum here in Adelaide of a range of uh, key stakeholders and experts in the area of homelessness, and that was an extremely successful forum, and as a consequence of that forum, uh, there'll be further follow-up uh, and distillation of some of the the commentary and ideas and suggestions that came out of that. So for those of you who were involved in that forum, please expect uh, some follow-up from my colleagues in the Don Dunstan Foundation. In his Nove November 1994 column uh, for the Adelaide Review, Don Dunstan said, in making claims that South Australia has one of the world's best lifestyles and that this is one of the best places to live, Adelaideans, when challenged, will often cite the fact that our housing stock is one of the best, if not the best, in the country, much admired by visitors, and that it is also the least expensive. That was Don back in 1994. Today, we must face realities that fail to live up to Don's proud observations of the past. There's been a sharp, decl sharp decline in housing affordability, and now there's a high risk that homelessness will rise sharply in South Australia if unemployment is not contained by smart stimulus measures and smart economic and industry development strategies. Don went on to say in his article, and I paraphrase, urban renewal should not also mean poor removal, that is pushing people from the centre of our city out to the periphery of the metropolitan area where the costs of transport and other outlays would be much greater. End of quote. Of course, this is a dynamic we can readily observe in Australia's major cities and one we must confront here in South Australia. Once proud cities are at great risk from deindustrialisation and rising unemployment, and of course, rising homelessness normally accompanies this. This is a very timely conference. It's an opportunity to ask some very hard questions about what combination of policies are needed to tackle homelessness and its causes. The Don Dunstan Foundation is proud to support this event. A decade ago, we played a pivotal role in advancing research and policy on affordable housing with one of our first Dunstan Fellows, uh, an eminent Australian, Professor Julian Disney, who along with others, developed the key elements of the National Affordable Housing Agreement now known as the National Partnership Agreement on Homelessness. The agreement was adopted by the State and Commonwealth Governments at uh, COAG in 2008 and provided a framework for the States and the Commonwealth Governments to work together to improve housing afford affordability and homelessness outcomes for Australians. We meet a decade after this early work was done and great challenges remain. Homelessness ravages the lives of too many Australians while many are at risk of homelessness as once secure jobs in foundational industries disappear along with the incomes that they generate. South Australia, like many other regions in Australia affected by deindustrialisation, is at a crossroads where solutions to the economic shocks we face require us to think boldly as generations preceding us have been forced to do so 
in the face of great social and economic challenges. While there are no simple solutions to homelessness, I'm convinced that we have enough collective wisdom and experience among us to radically reduce homelessness. For my part, I advocate an integrated urban regeneration and industrial, reju an industrial rejuvenation strategy. Put simply, the modernization of our affordable housing stock, a sharp increase in affordable housing and social housing starts can contribute to two important objectives at the same time. We urgently need to generate a faster rate of employment growth to tackle the job losses that we face in years to come as a consequence of the closure of the auto industry. We also need to accelerate the growth of affordable housing as part of our urban regeneration efforts. Done well, these things together creates industry and jobs at a time when it's sorely needed. It is job rich and socially beneficial investment. Of course, tackling homelessness requires much more than this, and that's the purpose of the conference today. I'm sure that the strategies required to make a real difference are in this room, are in your heads. Good strategy combined with courageous advocacy, advocacy and persistence can change the world we live in. Conferences like this are the product, are the product of a great deal of work and commitment, and I'd like to thank all our speakers. Uh, a special thanks to Donna Harden, Shana Pierce, Ben, and the Don Dunstan Foundation team for all their hard work and effort in organising this event. Thanks also to my colleague, uh, Professor Andrew Beer, who's played a pivotal role in this event and helping to make it possible and guiding its contents. Special thanks to our sponsors, uh, the Wyatt Trust, um, and I'd like to welcome Paul Madden, if he's here somewhere. I can't see him. Uh, Paul Madden, the CEO of uh, the Wyatt Trust, and uh, Phil Fagan-Smith from uh, Housing SA, who uh, Housing SA is a key sponsor of this event. Thanks for your support for this event, Phil. I wish you well, and thank you all on behalf of the Don, Don Dunstan Foundation for your participa participation in today's event. And uh, without further ado, it's my great pleasure to, minister, uh, to introduce the Honourable Katrine Hilliard, uh, representing uh, Minister Zoe Bedison, who will open, open this event. Could you please join me in welcoming Katrine? Thank you very much for that kind welcome. I also would like to start today by acknowledging that the land we meet on and gather on today is the traditional land of the Kaurna people, and I pay our collective and deep respects to the Kaurna people's relationship with this country, and also acknowledge the Kaurna people as the custodians of the Adelaide region, and acknowledge that their cultural and heritage beliefs are still as important to the living Kaurna people today. As Phil has also done, I would like to acknowledge the presence of the Honourable Reverend Dr Lynn Arnold, AO Chair of Trustees for the Don Dunstan Foundation, um, Ms Rachel Sanderson, MP Member for Adelaide, Ms Anne Gale, SA Commissioner for Equal Opportunity, Dr John Braley, SA Public Advocate, Mr David Butt, CEO of the Mental Health Commission, and Ms Glenda Stevens, CEO of Homelessness Australia. I'd also very much like to acknowledge the presence of all of you here today. I'm so pleased to be here and to have this opportunity to speak with you. I've had the great pleasure of working alongside many of you in the past in different roles. And as I look around this room, I really am filled with hope that together we really can make a difference on the issue of homelessness. So it's really great to be here with you today. And I'd really like to start by paying tribute to all of your tireless work for many, many years in many cases. Um, I also wanted to let you know that the Minister for Social Housing, Zoe Bedison, is very um, sorry that she can't be here with you today and, as John has said, has asked me to speak for her. Um, I'm p particularly pleased to speak at this forum that focuses on a matter that the South Australian Government and many of you are deeply committed to addressing, the long-term health and well-being of some of our most disadvantaged citizens, those at risk of or experiencing homelessness. In South Australia, over the past five years, our homelessness sector has been completely reformed through the work of many of you in this room to meet Commonwealth and, key, and, Commonwealth and state key objectives through turning off the tap to prevent entry into homelessness with a focus on delivering evidence-based early intervention programs and initiatives, 
improving and expanding services to assist a greater number of homeless people by ensuring services are better connected and more responsive in order to achieve sustainable housing and social and economic participation outcomes. Through breaking the cycle of homelessness by providing long-term housing and support to prevent the recurrence of homelessness. But be before I provide some detail about what I consider have been some of our state's great successes in achieving these objectives, I would like to recognise the possibility of more difficult times ahead with the current National Partnership Agreement on Homelessness ending in June 2015. The ending of this partnership could mean a significant reduction of resources for specialist homelessness services and will place additional demands on government, community organisations and their staff, and most importantly, our most vulnerable citizens and our broader community. This, I think, coupled with a number of other regressive attacks on our community and our community sector is something that our government is committed to fight. Fight for these, fight against these cuts we must and fight alongside you, we will. And I think it's fair to say that if any sector is prepared to fight for resources and um, to advocate for the community's wellbeing in the face of such cuts, it's your sector. And I look forward to fighting alongside you for the community's wellbeing. Despite this uncertainty in funding commitments for the future, we can celebrate, however, and acknowledge the achievements of the specialist homelessness sector over the past four years. And I highlight some of these successes today and the positive effect these have had in this state and on our vulnerable citizens. The 75 specialist homelessness, domestic and Aboriginal family violence services delivered across 97 outlets in South Australia, uh, South Australia are mainly managed and delivered through our community partners and I pay tribute to your professionalism and tireless dedication in this regard. In 2013-2014, these services assisted over 20,916 South Australians and very importantly, with 5,381 children accompanying adults treated as clients in their own right and with their own special requirements. In meeting the needs of our most vulnerable citizens, all specialist homelessness services are seen as gateways to the broader homelessness and welfare system with a focus on intake and assessment of need and people only having to divulge and tell their story once. Here in South Australia, if a person approaches a homelessness service that is not best suited to assist them to resolve their issues, they can be actively assisted to link with the service that can they are connected in an incredibly respectful and dignified manner. In addition, for many people needing information and referral to the most appropriate pathway for assistance who may not be able to attend a local regional service, three specialist statewide gateway services for adults, women escaping violence and youth have been critical in connecting adults, young people and children to local regional specialist homelessness services. For the period 1 July 2013 to 31 March 2014, the three gateway services responded to over 4,900 calls from distressed South Australians and assisted them with advice and information and in cases of extreme risk to access emergency accommodation and support options. We can be very proud that South Australia has invested heavily in a range of innovative housing and support models that are proving to be critical in assisting people to stabilise, to reconnect with community and to get back on the path to independence. Two notable achievements amongst many include the Common Ground initiatives, providing mixed community supported accommodation in Port Augusta and at multiple sites in Adelaide and Ladder, Street, Ladder St Vincent Street, a partnership between Housing SA, St John's Youth Services and Ladder, helping young people to be securely housed and mentored and supported to maintain links to education and employment. In recognition of the importance of a housing first rather than a housing ready approach, where acknowledgement is given to the importance of safe and secure housing to supporting people who are, at, who are homeless or at risk, and prioritising intervention for those most at risk or vulnerable, we have also implemented a supportive housing program. In this program, 484 accommodation options, mainly newly built under the previous federal government's nation building economic stimulus program, 
have been allocated to homeless clients and each accommodation outcome is aligned with an extra package of support of $8,000 per annum per property. Accommodation and case management support is not time limited, but for the duration of need, based on a case management plan and clearly defined case management goals. The success of this program has clearly demonstrated the value of authentic and complementary partnerships between Housing SA, community organisations in their roles as either property manager or support provider, and high need clients in achieving lasting outcomes with benefits to the individual and the community as a whole. The program's success has also demonstrated the central role that individualised and intensive case management support plays in helping people improve their lives and their capacity to live independently. Other supportive housing-like initiatives have also included a program for supporting people at risk of homelessness after exiting prisons and the Aged Homelessness Program, which provides intensive outreach support for elderly people who are often unable to be accommodated in mainstream aged care facilities because of the complexity of their issues or because of their inability due to a lifetime of disadvantage to live in intensively tenanted mainstream facilities. Intensive tenancy, early intervention and outreach support initiatives are also providing access to effective case management responses to support homeless people and those at risk of homelessness. These and other models have broken new ground in combining housing and support in new ways, resulting in many positive outcomes for climate clients. Aboriginal people are among our most disadvantaged citizens and are overrepresented in homelessness statistics. In recognition of this, specialist homelessness services have a target of at least 20% Aboriginal clients to ensure efforts are focused where they are most needed. The individual and spe specific needs of Aboriginal people are also recognised through Aboriginal focused services. These include the Lakeville, Lakeview Transitional Accommodation Centre in Port Augusta, the Aboriginal Transitional Housing and Outreach Service in Adelaide, and the Cuba PD Homeless and support service, which all focus on mobile Aboriginal people from rural and remote communities who are at risk of rough sleeping and for whom a dedicated specialist service has been required for some time. In the Aboriginal family violence area, Aboriginal specific search services such as Nunga Minamar and the NPY Women's Council Domestic Family Violence Service, along with a number of other regional services such as those in Cuba PD, Port Augusta and Sejuna are critical to ensuring the needs of Aboriginal women and their families are met. South Australia has led the way with a centralised, integrated, web-based case management system, H2H, which has been pivotal to our reform initiatives over the last few years. H2H enhances opportunities for integrated and collaborative strengths-based practice amongst specialist homelessness services with a focus on intake and assessment, case planning with people and the development of clear goals around stabilising long-term accommodation and moving, where possible, towards independence. Strong partnerships are also evident. Partnerships which bring together relevant expertise, but also, importantly, bring relationships and partnerships that otherwise may not have happened that allow us to collectively impact on the issues that are really important. The Department for Communities and Social Inclusion and the Office for Women partner with a range of government and non-government agencies to implement and enhance the family safety framework across South Australia. We are all working towards a holistic family response to keep women and children safe, and it is vital that South Australia's police, men's services and women's services work together. However, we are all aware that there are areas in which, while positive gains have been made, challenges are still clear and further work must be done, such as getting case management used universally and consistently across the sector, more effective coordination processes across the sector and between homelessness and mainstream agencies, and appropriate services for people from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds. Strengthening child-focused practice is a case in point where while the sector has shown exemplary efforts in enhancing its capacity to meet the needs of vulnerable children with the support of Together for Kids, Relationships Australia and others, 
more work is required, so the intervention occurs early in a child's experience to minimise the da damage, which statistics show can be lifelong. The evaluation has highlighted the limited information available, which assesses long-term impact and outcomes in relation to homelessness, and demonstrates factors beyond the control or reach of the specialist homelessness sector that have a profound impact on homelessness levels and the experiences and life journeys of individuals. Bricks and mortar and a support service alone do not necessarily mean good outcomes for homeless people. Integrated, regionalised responses, holistic and collective practices, planned and systematic approaches and good communication are essential components for enabling services, service models to collectively impact and result in measurable outcomes. Housing SA's blueprint, blueprint for Change offers the potential to overcome some of the structural systems and other barriers, making the best use of resources. The core of Housing SA's vision is to design and implement an integrative mod integrated model of housing and services and systems within and across sectors, connecting people with supports relevant to need and facilitating connections between wellbeing, home, place and community. The need for an adequate stream of a range of affordable accommodation and housing options with the right level of support and length of stay with well-resourced and trained specialist teams connected and working collaboratively across sectors in a planned and systematic way is a continuing challenge for the future. Over the coming months, the Department for Communities and Social Inclusion will strengthen partnerships with its community partners, harnessing your ex expertise and commitment to the needs of homeless citizens in co-producing a new sector to meet the challenges of the new political and economic realities. If you haven't already, we are expecting that you will hear very soon about plans we are committed to for developing together a new sector. Our community partners and their clients have the knowledge and experience and I envisage a strengthened and central role for all of you in this process in line with the government's Better Together vision to support the Premier's desire to move from announce and defend to, to debate and decide policy making to truly and authentically partner and co-produce integrated outcomes with stakeholders at every local level. Your attendance today and the lineup of speakers and panel members clearly indicates the level of expertise and interest in exploring and building on evidence-based approaches that can optimise our use of the community's resources and make a real difference in the lives of vulnerable people in our community. I wish you great success with the day and look forward to newfound insights being captured in homelessness policy and service redesign over the coming months. Again, it is a great pleasure to be with you here today. I remain inspired by so many of you and your colleagues and I very much look forward to continuing to work al alongside you with and for our most vulnerable community members. Thank you very much for having me.